Welcome to the Mogul Podcast. I'm Tim Bryson, Director of Athlete Education and Compliance, and I'm the host of our show. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're a returning community member, welcome back. As y'all know, the Mogul Podcast is dedicated to educating all NIL athletes and brands on how to ensure compliance, how to maximize NIL activity, and how to make a difference in the ever-evolving NIL landscape. This episode is super special. It's our first full episode. Um, an episode is going to kick off and really um, set the direction for what this podcast will continue to be for future seasons and future years to come. Uh, we have two special guests and really the two special guests, uh, the co-founders of Mogul. Uh, so without further ado, Aiden and Brandon, welcome to our podcast, yo. Tim, it's a pleasure to be here. Extremely excited about what this podcast is going to bring um, and you know what, what all, what all you're going you're to be able to teach the listeners about. So Really excited to be here and uh, looking forward to it. Echo everything he said, man. Excited for this and and, and what it's going to turn into and blossom into. And it's your podcast, man. We're, we're here to support you and uh, and have you run with this thing. Well, I appreciate it, yo. And we're going to jump straight in because there's a lot that I know y'all discussed on uh, past podcasts, right? I think, Ada, you mentioned earlier, I've been up over 100 podcasts, which is commendable, um, very, very commendable. But neither one of y'all have been interviewed by Timothy Ford Bryson. So it's going to look a little different. So Aiden, what's your story, bro? Talk to us, man. What's your story? Yeah, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to be interviewed by you, Tim. Um, my story, so I was born in Western Canada, raised in New Jersey. Both Brandon and I were born or raised in northern parts of New Jersey. We went to, went to rival high schools. Uh, graduated from Notre Dame, um, one of my proudest accomplishments in 2017. Went on to work um, in corporate strategy and private equity at Morgan Stanley, Lexington Partners, and IHS Market. Um, but really, as it relates to Mogul, wasn't passionate about what I was doing on a daily basis. It, you know, working in Excel, running quarterly reports, wasn't waking me up in the morning. And I recognized that I could make a much larger, tangible impact in the lives of others. Um, so really, looked at opportunities to do that. Um, obviously, name, image, and likeness had started to come to the forefront following Gavin Newsom's um, allowances for California athletes beginning in 2023. We wrote up a business plan that would not only help athletes and brands, but the community as well. Um, so I'm extremely excited about where we've grown to today, all of the impact that we've been able to have on others, um, and where we're headed as well. Real quick, Brandon, before you jump in, you mentioned uh, Jersey, rival high schools. Seton Hall, what's your experience at Seton Hall like? Yeah, it was awesome. Um, honestly, my experience at Seton Hall was quite grueling, to be fair. I was on there on, on an academic scholarship, and um, a lot of the, what I learned at Seton Hall and a lot of my experiences there were far more difficult than what I experienced at Notre Dame, actually. Um, but Seton Hall is a really, really special place. Um, it's a brotherhood. It has its step forward. Um, I wouldn't have liked to gone anywhere else. It was just really, really incredible. Set me up for success in the future. Um, the alumni network is incredibly strong, too. So um, I had a great time. That's dope. Brandon, talk to us, yo. Jersey kid, too. Fellow Jerseyan, um, rival high school. I didn't know, I didn't know academically Seton Hall was was any type of rigorous. I wouldn't have guessed. <laughs> um, but <laughs> no, had the opportunity and fortunate, man. My path, I was very fortunate along the way. Um, pretty much clean cut. You know, my mom raised my brother and I. My father obviously was in the picture as well. So had a really good supporting cast which I think is so important, especially in today's world where, you know, 18 year olds have to make, you know, massive decisions on where to play collegiately. And then now NIL being a factor and, you know, so supporting cast, you know, my, I was very fortunate in that regard. Um, but as Aiden alluded to, had the, you know, the opportunity to go to a Catholic and a Jesuit high school in New Jersey, the only Jesuit school there. So that was a really cool and unique experience. And it made my transition um, to uh, South Bend, obviously graduating Notre Dame pretty easy um, and, and seamless for me. So, you know, again, pretty clean cut and, and, and um, obviously exciting path having played quarterback uh, for both Notre Dame and for the University of Central Florida. Um, I think I did have a little bit more difficult time, you know, from the academic standpoint at Notre Dame having gone through an accounting major. Um, it's not easy and it's a, you know, having a full-time job playing football, just adding that academic component, as you know, Tim, um, with your background, it, it uh, it adds extra layers, right? But again, a supporting cast, really phenomenal people um, that surrounded me at Notre Dame. Um, you know, just my peers and, and teachers and coaches. Um, you know, it made it it made it easy for me to to get through that. So 
Um, but yeah, obviously, uh, I give a lot to the people around me and um, a phenomenal experience at Notre Dame at UCF. And then again, the network that Aiden alluded to, you know, he alluded it to uh, Seton Hall, but it's the same thing at Notre Dame. And, and it's the people that you're in the class with that are going to give you the opportunities to excel uh, beyond, you know, those four years that you're in school. What's well, important, y'all said it. I want to start by saying thank y'all for sharing that first part of y'all's story. Uh, but I think one conversation, a point of conversation we have often um, is the importance of choosing the right brand deals, right, with these athletes, but also the brands that we choose to partner with. Um, in a similar way, college choice is a very important decision. Yeah, I mean, I both mentioned the network of Notre Dame. I'm an Ohio kid myself. Notre Dame was always in the picture, especially going to Jesuit High School, too. But why Notre Dame? Like, what about Notre Dame? I know it's a special, the gold dominant. Why Notre Dame, Aiden? Talk to us. Yeah, for me, I mean, Notre Dame offers such a unique blend of academics, athletics, um, and spiritual spirituality as well. Um, for me, it was always a dream school. Um, once I realized that, you know, it was an exceptional academic school in high school, they'd been named number one business school by Bloomberg a few years in a row, um, coupled with the fact that, you know, massive football, massive athletics as well, just felt like it was the perfect, not only social experience um, and academic experience, but also the perfect size. Um, for me. Um, the, this, the saying goes, Lou Holtz's famous saying is, for those that know Notre Dame, no, no explanation is necessary. For those that don't know Notre Dame, no explanation will suffice. Um, and I think that that's extremely accurate and honestly the best way to put it. Um, when you get on campus, there's an aura and a feeling that I personally didn't experience at other schools when I was touring. Um, not to say that you don't experience those at other schools, but it was just Notre Dame was the perfect fit for me. Um, I knew that I wanted to pursue business, um, specifically finance and um, everything else just made so much sense. The network has been incredibly supportive and I think it's a testament to you know, a pairing like Brandon and I is starting a business together, right? Uh, that doesn't happen at a lot of other schools and mm. um, we're, we're incredibly fortunate to have gone to Notre Dame where that could happen. Your Brandon, where else were you looking? Why Notre Dame? Yeah, I was gonna ask Aiden if you got a full official visit tour of like all of the stuff. <laughs> He, he went on his he went on his university tour Yo. <laughs> um, no but like you know that's the cool thing about it is is you get to see all these different campuses and get to feel you know the essence and the aura that Aiden alluded to just going on Notre Dame's campus and that's you know I just got asked the question I was committed to Penn State originally and the question was why did you decommit or why did you choose Notre Dame and I just asked them, the people who asked me those questions, I'm like, have you ever stepped foot on Notre Dame's campus, right? Um, there's just something about it. And everyone says that, even if it's the Georgias in 2017 and their fan base coming to Notre Dame and, and you know, experiencing everything that, that Notre Dame's about, right? They left after they beat us by one point and they left and, and left us a letter uh, to our athletic department and our uh, athletic director saying how, how, grace, how gracious and, um, and wonderful our, our fan base is, right? Um, I don't know if they would have left that that letter up if they had lost if they had lost the game, but you know, <laughs> um, it, it just speaks volumes to the character of uh, the culture that is built at Notre Dame and the culture of the individuals who are part of that school. Right? I think some of the biggest fans of Notre Dame are people who who didn't even go to that school. Mm -hmm. you know, Sixty five year old, you know, men who remember the day that they've been denied. Um, yeah. that they didn't get in. They, they got their denial yeah. letter from Notre Dame. Yeah. Crazy, man. So, you know, those are the stories that I heard going through my recruitment process. Um, and that really spoke, you know, spoke to me and, and it felt like a culture that I wanted to be a part of. Uh, and my family, right? You're making these decisions for not just yourself, but, you know, Aiden's family and my family for, for many years to come. That's real. So I'm gonna take it a segment too. Um, and again, both of y'all are here because y'all are co-founders, right? Um, started the business together. Uh, but Aiden, first tell us how y'all met and then how did this conversation about mobile even begin to start? Yeah, uh, Brandon and I have a unique story, right? So we met each other originally in high school. I don't even remember what the first encounter we ever had was, but um, I'm a couple years older than Brandon. We just knew each other socially throughout high school. Um, got to know each other much better at Notre Dame, uh, more from a professional standpoint. We reconnected actually post-graduation. Brandon had um, has experience working at in an accounting firm called KPMG um, and, and in venture capital as well. Um, and was looking to kind of pursue opportunities within private equity. Um, I, I 
which point I was working in private equity. So Brandon had reached out and we had started kind of a more professional relationship. I think you might have still been in school at the time. Um, but regardless, um, you know, we reconnected, you know, more on a professional level post-graduation. Um, as it came time to start Mogul and once the business plan was written, Brandon and I started talking on a much more regular basis about what features, functionality, um, and other services would need to be available in a service like this and how we could ensure that not only the football and basketball players, but all athletes would have access to these services and these opportunities. Um, so as we started talking more and more, as the business plan was written, um, we, we eventually elected to co-found the business. Um, Brandon can kind of talk to his side of that story, you know, why it means so much to him, but also, you know, the NFL prospects as well. Um, yeah. yeah. What's up, Brandon? Why well, are you going to vote? Yeah. Stay involved. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that was, a, I mean, you could talk about all the decisions that go into uh, writing a business plan for a non-existent industry, <laughs> yeah. calling a kid who's, you know, dreams are to play in the NFL um, mid training. Right. I'm like, this is football season for me. This is my goal right now. I don't know, you, but you know, you always consider what's, what's next, right. in your plan. And so knowing who Aiden was and his, and his background and his experience, I, I trusted him and, you know, you just take a leap of faith, right. I think Aiden took a huge leap of faith. I took a massive leap of faith of trusting someone uh, and their idea, right. In a non-existent place. And so, you know, and then you have to go out to investors. You have to have conversations with people who also are considering that this space is non-existent. And you know, for us, it's it's uh, it, it's 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 seeing into the future of what's to come, right? Obviously, Aiden saw that California's governor had um, allowed you know that bill that would allow college athletes in California in 2023 to make money. So it was coming. It was a matter of of when, not if. Um, but I was super excited about it. I was passionate about it. I've had so many conversations in, in locker rooms uh, day in and day out and have seen guys and girls be exploited um, and hearing stories like Ed O'Bannon's story and, and being a part of, uh, of Arike Mubuale's uh, mm -hmm. national winning, you know, those two shots, right, that brought her so much fame and her being on Dancing with the Stars and not being able to capitalize on those types of opportunities. Um, being really close to those experiences, Tim, um, and having consistent conversations with, with, you know, even Josh Adams, a good friend, right? 33 trucking, the kid was up for a Heisman Trophy in uh, I think it was 2017. And, and, you know, we had all this merchandise, all this marketing that was surrounding him and not a single dollar went into his pocket from that, that time period, right? So this is why I'm passionate about it. And, and, and even myself playing quarterback at the highest level, um, if I had came away and, and graduated school with $25,000, you know, that's minimal at what I would have made. I would have been set up with a foundation from, you know, financial standpoint, having helped my mom, help brother with, with student loans, right? There's all these circumstances within college athletes' lives that uh, NIL is making an impactful difference. And obviously, Mogul is, is leading, that, um, leading that charge. I mean, Mogul is definitely leading that. And I think I told you that in the interview process that, like, y'all having um, y all, y all religious background, y'all Jesuit educated background. I was an immediate draw for me. Uh, but Aiden, when y'all were building like, a business plan, right? As I've been doing informational interviews with people that we're partnering with, they keep saying Mogul has looked in the city of the future when they first started, right? They were future oriented from the beginning while people now are playing catch up. What about Mogul? Like, what did you do differently uh, looking at the competitive landscape of NIA when you were first starting? Yeah, so, I mean, on the competitive landscape, right? I think it's important to note that the, I wrote the business plan for Mogul originally in October of 2019, and that's when the company was founded, right? So at that point, there really was very limited competitive landscape in general, right? Open Doors had been servicing um, collegiate athletics for, with social media campaign services, influencers just starting to get started um, with regards to also, you know, media offerings, um, but there was no holistic name, image, and likeness solution. Mm -hmm. um, I recognize that, you know, having gone to a school like South Bend, my parents live in, in Columbus as well. I recognize that these incredible athletes provide such unique value to both local businesses and national brands at the local level for marketing opportunities, but that they would need a safe, secure and compliant medium to connect to those opportunities. At the same time, on the flip side, brands would need a seamless process to be able to connect with these athletes that would save them time, money, and resources. So from day one, we've been on a mission of equity. 
um, both with regards to equal access to opportunities um, and with regards to community vitalization and, and local community development and benefit. Um, so the way that we really approached this was, okay, there's gonna need to be a service that will safely connect both parties for marketing opportunities. But we also wanna make sure that the local businesses and the citizens that haven't been able to derive any value from these campaigns and from these athletes historically are also getting a little bit of a kickback. So almost in tandem with building the product and identifying the features and functionality that needed to go into it, we were also identifying what our philanthropic mission was, what parties needed most help, especially coming out of the pandemic when local businesses were struggling so mightily, um, what parties and what population is most marginalized in the local communities in which we're trying to serve. And where we landed was, okay, low income um, households are really struggling following the pandemic, specifically as it relates to their children, their opportunities as a result to these financial struggles are becoming more and more limited. How can we help the children? We took, a, we took a, another layer of the onion back and realized that sports, specifically youth athletics, are becoming a pay for play machine. We understood that without youth athletics, both myself, Brandon, everyone else, um, wouldn't have had the opportunity to compete um, and learn a lot of those characteristics that are so important, both for professionalism and to pursue potential co collegiate scholarships as well, teamwork, accountability, things like that. Um, so our plan originally was to donate a portion of our proceeds to Little League programs, um, Towns and Rec system, things like that. But we eventually identified every kid's sports as a really strong philanthropic partner. So now what we do is we donate a portion of all of our um, income or all of our profits directly to every kid's sports to help foster and promote the accessibility of local youth athletic programming for all athletes throughout the country who can't afford the ability to pay the equipment fees, pay the travel fees, pay the registration fees. Um, so everything that we've been doing here at Mobile has always been focused on equal access and mm -hmm. uh, giving back. Yeah, super <laughs> evident uh, about the in both the mission, but also um, the athletes that have joined the platform. And Brandon, as a chief athletic officer, I mean, it seems like a no-brainer um, to recruit athletes to this platform because of the philanthropic mission, right? Because of the focus on equity, because of the focus on justice. Um, but as you're speaking with athletes, I guess, what conversations are you having with them to not just explain what Mogul is, but how they can benefit uh, from uh, being involved with Mogul um, during their college career? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not one to say that we're perfect in any regard as far as, you know, speaking to that mission, but we continue to, through you, Tim, right, through hiring you, through our initiatives with partnering with Every Kid Sports, to uh, being on these campuses and showing our face, you know, on these little tours that we've done. Yeah. Um, everything that we do is try to empower the athletes, right? Yeah. And that's the, that's the conversation that we are having consistently as, as athletes are onboarding. So that means providing them with all the necessary resources to support, educate, and to you know, I think what we're doing in a good job is, is shifting towards um, supporting athletes after they graduate, right? Like we're, you know, Aiden and I are thinking about internship opportunities, yep. connecting them to philanthropic opportunities. How can we build more um, than just these one-off sponsorship posts, right? So that's what we're, that's what we're uh, building towards with our athletes. Um, and I think we've done a really good job of that. And I think you know, they athletes currently see mobile as more of a, um, again, more a, of a holistic kind of career college development and, and, and NIL obviously being at the forefront of it and, and a way to make money, but they see mobile as a platform that's here to support and educate them and, um, and, and they see us as a, as a, as a pure resource of, of help, right? Um, so that's what I'm excited about in terms of the, you know, the, the brand that we've built here at mobile. For sure. And I guess the athletes that have joined now over the last 13 months, Brandon, I guess, what have you seen? How have you seen their interests change? Or how have you seen the questions they've asked change and evolved over the last you know, year? Yeah, it's been more, I mean, that education curve is so massive for everybody involved. And that's, again, another reason we brought you on is to help speed and expedite that educational and that learning curve for our athletes. But I think the edu I think the questions have become a little bit more sophisticated. Sure. Um, as, sure. as Aiden knows, you know, last year and for the six months, um, questions were a little bit, you know, how do I sign up and, and where do I go to sign up for NIL? And, um, you know, can I do a post for $20? So like, you know, the, the questions have become more around content creation. How do I, how do I maximize my brand value? Um, mm -hmm. where, do I, where do I get educated? What videos do I, do I watch to, 
you know, to follow some people who are doing it the right way. What resumes am I putting together? How do I sell myself, not sell myself, but, you know, increase my brand value on, on mm -hmm. mobile, right? What can mm -hmm. I do to do that? Um, what other opportunities are you guys offering, right? And, and for us, it's the Athlete Advisory Council that, you know, we provide for our athletes as an internship uh, experience. It's, it's content creation capabilities for us. Um, that we can offer to our athletes and to our brands, right? That that obviously provides more results uh, for certain campaigns. So again, it's more of a holistic uh, service, and they understand that, and they and they see that from us. Um, and uh, I'm super excited about that. So Aiden, I mean, to Brandon's point, I mean, the questions have become more sophisticated and nuanced. I like how you said that, Brandon. Um, but Mogul has done a good job. We have done a phenomenal job in evolving with the time, uh, meeting athletes where they want to be met um, and where they are. Uh, could you speak just more just about uh, both Mogul Master and Mogul Monetize and, and how we can support universities and colleges uh, across the NIL landscape? Yeah, absolutely, Tim. Um, so one of the things that we realized as we observed the broader name, image, and likeness landscape throughout the first 12 months of its existence is that what we found is that institutions, athletes, and brands still need a drastic level of support that they're still not receiving. There is a massive gap both with regards to access to technology, services, and education, and with regards to distribution of these services. You have companies like Open Doors and Influencer that are doing a great job of servicing the populations that they serve, but they're selling services for exorbitant fees um, that most athletes and most institutions can't afford. Um, so what we did with Mogul Monetize is we've created a free and holistic name, image, and likeness solution that offers institutions marketplace, compliance, and educational offerings and capabilities so that they can support their student athletes as they navigate this new name, image, and likeness landscape, while also giving their staff the tools, the resources, and the technology to monitor and also protect their student athletes as they navigate this new landscape. So Mogul Monetize is a free marketplace compliance and education solution that is being offered to schools. What it allows them to do is they are, they're provided a preferred marketplace where their alumni, their corporate partners, local businesses in the area can interact and engage and connect with their student athletes in a fully compliant and secure way. They're given a backend compliance solution where they can monitor all of the activity on the marketplace and the, their athletes can also disclose outside activity through this solution and they're providing educational offerings. As you may be aware, um, Mogul's already and always provided education to our athletes. It's one of the things that we figured were, we decided were baseline necessities in this NIL landscape. So we have financial literacy partners, tax partners, contract and legal partners that we provide baseline free educational resources to all athletes on the platform immediately upon sign up. But now we've built a holistic NIL course that is also being provided to partner institutions called Mogul Master. Mogul Master is an e-learning module course that covers key NIL verticals like NIL compliance, financial literacy, tax guidance, contract and legal review, and brand building. It can be distributed individually to every student athlete at your institution while providing the school the ability to monitor that. So all of this does more, more than anything else is just make sure that we're providing the best level of support that we can to all players in the landscape, because we've observed that currently um, everyone needs much more help. As Brandon mentioned, there's a massive gap as it relates to education, but there's also an even larger gap as it relates to accessibility of services and technology. So we're bridging that gap. That's what we're definitely are. And Brandon, as we think about the future of Mogul, uh, where we're headed, uh, what, what gets you most excited right now? Um. I had another joke for Aiden. I forgot it. Um, uh, what gets me most excited is, um, is, is how athletes are becoming more sophisticated, not to overuse the word, but, um, you know, and, and they want to be more involved and they want to, they want to get involved with companies like ours on, on a more, um, you know, more tangible base, right? So again, with our athlete advisory and, and your NIL fellowship program that you're putting together, Tim, there's more opportunities for our athletes to get more service out of, out of mogul than just a, a campaign and an endorsement. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what, um, I think, I think that's really, you know, differentiating us in the space is, is that we have these different components that can help athletes beyond just, just NIL endorsements. 
Um, and as, as you know, you've heard me say before, I think the biggest thing with NIL overall is the ability for athletes to work this, this new entrepreneurial and, and creativity, that muscle yep. that, they, you know, that I wasn't able to really, you know, work and exercise until I was 22, 23 years old gra- after I graduated from school. Right. Uh, so they get to connect with chief athletic officers, uh, officers, they get to connect with chief marketing officers and CEOs of, of startups and big corporations and people who are running social media for these, these companies um, at 18 years old, right? Like there's this, this accessibility for these student athletes that they, you know, that, that they've never had before. So they're learning these, these new tricks of, uh, and trades um, at such a younger age. And it's only going to get younger, right? Like high school is, is starting to open up the ranks. Um, so you know, these high school athletes are going to have to take the same approach in terms of being able to maximize their NIL value. Um, so I think it's a really phenomenal muscle that these athletes are having to work. And I think that's going to set us up um, set us up as athletes for better professional and corporate, you know, jobs, right? Because we we learn the intangibles. We we understand the discipline and the and the and the timeliness and the accountability. We we get that. Mm-hmm. But there's a component of like there's a component that you miss how right. And as an athlete, you know, my my experience compared to Aiden's experience at Notre Dame, you know, he's been in that that world of like work he understands yeah. what work looks like I, i'm i'm coming out of school and i come into a, a situation where remote work is like you know 90 percent of the population and i don't know what a work environment feels like mm-hmm. right um mm-hmm. and you know you don't get that internship experience while you're playing and so like that that i think that muscle of the communication and speaking to people professionally um you know, and that type of engagement, I think, is going to set our, you know, set new athletes up, the next generation of athletes, for a better post-athletic career in, in corporate America. So, but Aiden, same question. What are you most excited about looking forward? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that continues to excite us most about mobile is our ability to provide more opportunities to more athletes at a quicker and more seamless rate, right? Um, we built the solution to be able to provide opportunities for all 500,000 NCAA athletes and those that have gone before them post-graduation. Um, and what we've been able to do more than anything else, as we've built a greater brand recognition, as we've built more and more features into the platform, is service more athletes at one time. We're extremely excited that since day one, over 60% of our deals have been in non-revenue generating sports. So we're p- truly proving out the model and the thesis that all athletes provide value in this landscape. And as we continue to bring more and more brands onto the platforms, brands like DoorDash and Meta and Sports Clips and Applebee's and also local businesses throughout each of these markets, we're able to provide more and more opportunities, not only as Brandon mentioned for marketing opportunities, but also for internship opportunities and uh, merchandise sales and other incredible opportunities. Um, so that's the thing that excites us most um, for me is just reaching more and more audiences getting into more and more markets and helping educate and support more and more athletes. Um, I think we've done a really great job of that. I agree. <laughs> I, I agree. So segment three, man, segment three, uh, three takeaways, really action items. I mean, it's not class, right? I think for those who have joined uh, on this podcast, have been engaged this entire time. But as we think about three things that each of you wants um, our listeners to take away from this conversation today, we'll start with Brandon and move back to Aiden. Uh, what are those three action items? Those three takeaways. Sure, we're going to overlap here in some regard, but uh, don't be afraid. I mean, I'm speaking from the business side, but don't be afraid to um, advertise with college athletes. Yeah. If they're engaged, then they will provide you results more than you know a, a macro influencer or Google and Facebook advertising. So look into the details and, and some of the data points of working in advertising with college athletes. It's a valuable tool um, that's for brands. Athletes, the more you engage, the more you communicate, and the more you take initiative, um, the more money you're going to make, and the more bigger brands are going to want to work with you, right? So, you know, it's not a one-way street where you get paid and you have to do one thing and, and that's it. If you want to be more effective and you want your brand value and your market value to increase, you have to put in the work the same way you have to put in the work on the field, on the court, respectively. Um, that's number two. So it's a two-way street to sum it up. Uh, number three, um, mobile is 
is a holistic supportive system for athletes and for for brand, for any stakeholder in the NIL space. Um, you know, so universities, brands, athletes, you name it, we're here to educate, support and inform um, in any way necessary to, you know, have a successful NIL engagement. I love it. And what's up? Yeah, I'll go in reverse order here and I'll try to be a little bit different. Um, so on the institutional side of things, um, key takeaway from this call is that you don't need to be paying exorbitant fees for the technology that you so desperately need and that we'd love to be able to help support you, your student athletes and your local businesses and alumni network um, as you navigate this new landscape. Um, Mogul Monetize details can be found online on our website at mogul.online, but we're also more than happy to have a conversation. We'd love to have, come to campus, demo the platform for you. And what it provides is a seamless, secure, and fully compliant solution to help manage and monitor your NIL endeavors for all parties. On the brand side, um, the reason why you use a marketplace is to not only save yourself time, money, and resources, we automatically generate contracts for you. We provide access to a network of thousands of collegiate athletes, and we provide a seamless payment and communication method. But also it's an opportunity to connect with and uncover new opportunities to expand your marketing campaigns and derive an additional ROI and value that you perhaps didn't foresee possible. On the athlete side, um, it really does go without saying everything Brandon said, you get what you put in. Um, but the only thing that I'd add to that is that NIL was built for everyone. Um, mm. The majority of the brands that we work with are fairly agnostic towards which sport you play. They just want someone who is a strong brand ambassador who allows them to reach local markets in a way that they aren't normally able to. Um, so don't be discouraged or don't feel like name, image, and likeness was built just for the starting point guard or the starting uh, quarterback. Over, as I said, over 60% of the deals have, that we've done have been in non-revenue generating sports and NIL is for all. Mobile's completely free. We would encourage you all to sign up. Y'all got to be ready to get back to work, for real. Y'all got to be ready to get back to work. Before we bounce, we got a few minutes. We're going to start with Brandon, putting you on the spot, bro. This wasn't on the list, but it's okay. Again, you interviewing with me. Uh, first question, Brandon, you, you ready? You good? Um kind of nervous but yeah go ahead man y'all chop it a lot bro favorite college town you've been to outside, than, of, outside of oh uh, yeah come on man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> outside of that school yeah you should ask Aiden this question he would he would struggle a little bit more he loves everywhere he goes I'm asking um, good. I honestly man I enjoyed Ann Arbor I think yeah I really enjoyed Ann Arbor um you know Aiden knows a lot of good restaurants wherever we go so that that always helps um and, and the weather was like, I, I enjoy like dull weather, like not too hot, not too cold, you know, 60, 65 degree. I, I enjoy that. And so that was that was the time period that we were in Ann Arbor. So I, I enjoyed it. Let me ask you this before I move to Aiden. Favorite snack when you're traveling? Um, Slim Jim's. Oh Slim my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> slim gyms and those those like vanilla wafer type of circle cookies though like in the blue package from the gas stations <laughs> hey your favorite college town bro yeah i mean we haven't traveled there for mogul but uh my favorite college town that i've ever been to is bloomington indiana oh, um, it's absolutely gorgeous um really great vibe just beautiful town i do like ann arbor as well um, but Bloomington would definitely be my favorite. We're headed down to Raleigh Chapel Hill area on um, Monday. Um, that's another top one for me. So excited to show Brandon that area as well. Um, I'm surprised that Brandon didn't say Chick Fil A um, for the uh, for the snack because I swear to God I only eat Chick Fil A when I'm. Uh. Um, it's like a staple of the trips. <laughs> Fucking cry. Last two questions. Brandon, when you travel with Aiden, man, what, what, what can we expect? Um, <laughs> you can expect good night sleeps. <laughs> uh, no, you can expect to to learn to learn about a city or why he why yeah. he enjoys it. Yeah. Um, you know, and 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 you can learn to you can expect to go to a certain staple restaurant in that city. It's real. Aiden, when you try more Brandon, man, what's it like? Um, definitely early to bed. Um, that's the same <laughs> rule of Brandon. Um, 
early bed, um, <laughs> random, random weird exercises before bed or early in the morning, like laying on the ground of the hotel room. Um, oftentimes sharing a bed. Um, so uh, you can expect all three of those. Oh, that's, that's love, y'all. Well, thank y'all for joining the pod. We got to get y'all on uh, at least quarterly, if not monthly, just to give updates in regards to what Mogul's doing, where we're headed. Uh, but definitely a, a great way to start uh, this podcast. I'm definitely looking forward to future episodes of uh, some dope guests. I will share more about, again, how all athletes can get paid, uh, build their brand, and make a difference um, in both their local and global community. Uh, for everyone else, man, thank y'all for tuning in to the first episode of the Mogul Podcast. Um, definitely be sure to rate, or excuse me, subscribe first on either uh, Spotify, Apple Podcast, rate and review five stars. And if you have time, a phenomenal, glaring, glowing review uh, so we can jump this up to the top of the playlist. I look forward to future episodes, man. Tim, As always. Tim, thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. But what do you, what are we calling this podcast? Like what are, the mogul podcast, bro? Set a point, was, boom. All right, cool, man. Well, I'm excited for all of our future guests. I think we should do something special for the people who come on. And um, you know, I think you're gonna have some powerful people on on this show, and I think it's gonna take off and as it should. I think you're the first to pioneer this in the space. So kudos to you and and i think aiden and i are both fired up for uh i think what's long overdue for sure yo let's ride get mogul